Find out how you can spark your creativity by layering collage and paint to create abstract sketches. Hi there, I'm Janine. I'm an artist and I share my creative journey on this channel. Today I want to play a little more with collage. My intention is to see what I can create by mixing collage with paint. I use sketches like this mainly to experiment with the materials and to explore their potential. And it also might inspire future work. I love creating those to practice composition and to play with the tools and colour. I have a box of collage papers here that I made. I've already picked out just a couple. And I'm just going to continue pulling from the box. Now this is a really nice and um, soft wet and wet effect on here. But I think I'm going to take some of that. And I'm going to start these quite spontaneous. I'm going to take another piece. And then some of these stripey things here. I have those circles. I think this is a water soluble pencil actually. So we'll see how that goes. And as a glue, I've got this matte medium, just like a gel, gel medium. That's what it's called. And I like to apply it with this catalyst blade. Should check what I'm doing first. And I also want to add some paint to these. Got this really dark red and a green. These are just, um, I just randomly picked these. There's no, I didn't have a goal in mind. Right, this is dried up. I can't use that anymore. I've also got this orange that I never use mainly because I always mix my orange and you'll notice that I've got um, more bluish tones here and these are very warm tones I think that's gonna be a nice challenge to make them work together and I've got no rhyme or reason for what I'm doing here I'm just playing as I like to do Right now I've got wet paint here, I'm just going to do it on the back. I'm not actually a huge fan of this medium because I always find it very dry and thick. I wish it was a little bit more liquid. I have mixed it with water previously, but right now I can't be bothered to do that. And if you're wondering if I get um, how I get the wrinkles out, I don't. I just don't care about the wrinkles. You can obviously just use a, well I would usually just use a glue stick in my sketchbook, but I don't have that at the moment. Maybe I will use a brush for this because then I can water it down a little bit. I'm just adding a little bit of water here so it's not as thick. See if it still sticks. And then this is water soluble on here. So yeah, it's just gonna smudge. We'll embrace it. We'll do something with it. Or it just won't look good at the end, which is also fine. This is just an experiment. I like how the yellow comes through here. Was that even on top? My, uh, yeah, it's on top because some of it was still wet. I like that. That's quite unpredictable. And then I could put some transparent um, paper over here so I don't have to deal with the water-soluble medium moving. Found one. So I'll just stick that on top. 
maybe this way around then I've got the more rough texture. later. It's interfering with the spiral. This green and orange actually made a really nice yellow, which I wouldn't have thought that you can make a yellow from what they call secondary colors. Turns out you can, if it's quite muted. These are very bright green and orange. I think that's why it worked really well. I need to remember that for the future. I really like that colour. That was an accident too. And that is why I love experimenting. I'll do a little wash over here with some water. To one with a little bit more orange. Maybe next to the blue. I think I need to leave that to dry for a bit. And move on to another page. Now I really like those stripes. So I'm going to take some more. Actually, I think I already cut some. And then I've also got this one. Sort of black and white pieces. Kind of like this swirly bit. Not really swirly. And I also love this edge here. Some of this dark, maybe. I'm not sure this one goes now. Either this or this has to go. Let's keep this for another one. I'll do the pieces first before I add paint this time just for practical reasons. I'm liking the swirly marks today and the more watercolory soft washes. I thought it'd be difficult to make these colours work with the more blue-green colours, but because this made such a lovely yellow, it's actually working really well. Let's see what happens if I add some red. Do it right in the middle, like bullseye. Wasn't the best compositional choice. You can fix that. I'm going to leave this to dry as well and get another script sketchbook. I might do this one upside down so you can see it better. And I'll also try a neo color. Do a bit of a wash with that first. I should really use a bigger brush for that. That's why I've got this one. I hope that won't take too long to dry. And then I'll do this page in the meantime. Nice, that's the paper bits. Bits of paper come off. It's not really made for wet media, the sketchbook. Alright, let's use this thing that I wanted to use on the other one. So use some of this here. I like it a little bit on an angle. It's a bit more unexpected. This is very unusual for me what's happening at the moment. I really like that it's something different. Maybe it's going to spark something new for me. I think part of it is that the colours are so bright. 
mainly this red. That was all quite harsh, so I'm trying to add a little bit of softness with the water. I've heard it before, actually. Oh well. Maybe needs a little bit more collage. One of these swirls could be fun. And I might stick them on this um, tissue paper first, upside down, so I can avoid the pencil washing out. I don't even know where I want to put it yet. Let's just pop it here. And voila, no smearage. Well, that was not dry. Let's embrace it. I think that is my rule number one when painting. If something goes wrong that you didn't intend to do, just embrace it and it will make your painting better 90% of the time. Right, well that is a big old mess. Definitely not what I expected. I'm, not, I'm also not very keen on it, but um, I'll just go with it. If you like this video, consider subscribing. This needs to be dulled down a little bit. I'll leave it to dry, maybe I'll get back to it later. Somehow I'm feeling horizontal today. Usually I would put things vertically, but actually on the other one that I did earlier, I did them vertically. But something about the square format, I think, makes me want to put them horizontally today. I was going to put that underneath, I think. Oh well. It won't be underneath. Something just so freeing about collage, because it's very much, or a lot of it can be unconscious. You can just cut a piece, put it down, and you don't have to consciously m put a brush stroke brush stroke directly on the page. It's a bit more dark. This has had some time to dry and I think I want to go over everything with a glaze. Both probably. Actually, let's start with this one because this one I'm liking less. Let's try mainly green, but mixed with the other colours. And I'll make it quite watery. Just over everything. I do it here already as well. It's slightly more orange there. used that for the collage didn't I? I think I'll add a few more pieces here. I do you really like the way this comes out? And I'll cover this red bit here. Probably let the glaze dry first. 
but I'm impatient. this texture here and then I'm going to tone this red down by adding some of the green and I do quite like it now I'll add the green and then I can always add more red over the top. It's very transparent this green actually. It's um, a System 3 pale olive green. I don't think they tell you if they're opaque or transparent. Looks transparent to me. Work on the other one while this dries a bit. This is also still quite wet. Here I might add one of these little squares. a little bit more reddish paint because I like what the neo color did here that looks quite red so if I mix the red with the green it'll be more of a brownie red now they're all very angular shapes so I want to do something about that I'm still not keen on that red, but I did like what I did over here with the red and the green together. Because the way it's overlaid here, you can see both colours, but I want to only see more of a harmonious colour. A bit more green. Again, there's quite a lot of harsh angles here, so I want to disrupt those. It's a bit much. I need something a little bit darker over here. I just use a touch of this. Here. Hmm. I should have let that dry, that red. Hmm. Maybe I'll just go over it with the red. I'll make it a little bit more intense up here, a little more red. And this maybe a bit more red. I think the background's a bit too greenish still. I think I'd like it more like the other one. But it needs to dry for that first. And these here, I'm thinking I'll just leave raw as they are, because that might be some good inspiration one day. I'm not sure for what, but... I like... I like them the way they are. So I'll do a glaze over this, but... I will use a bigger brush this time.
And now that it's quite murky, I might add a little bit of white. Just over these, but actually that's too much. Too much white. Now this one I don't think is going to work out for now, so I'm going to give up on it, but I do like this one, it's a lot more simple. This one I, actually I'll give it one more try, just add some white here, actually maybe mix it with a few other colours, since it isn't going anywhere, I don't like it, I might as well take some risks. I think I'm just gonna leave it. I got a little bit fed up with that last piece at the end, but even when sketches don't look good, I always enjoy the process. And these sketches might spark ideas for other paintings. And that might be subconsciously, or when I look back at my sketchbooks to search for inspiration. If you want some more ideas for filling a sketchbook, then you can watch the video that I made in the link up here. Thanks and bye bye.